All right, I think we're good to go. So today, we're going to learn how to do some duct sealing. Uh, my name is Will DeRigo. I work with Conservation Services Group. This is my coworker, Eric Wilder. Um, he's been doing this 15 years. Uh, I'm going on close to 10. Um, the point of today is um, saving energy, obviously. So yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, so walking into newer homes, um, you'll find now that you might start to see more of this, more duct sealing. Um, You'll see it in different forms. You'll see tapes, you'll see mastics. Um, there's some forms you don't see because they do it from the inside of the ductwork. Today we're gonna show you straightforward with just a mastic. So um, we're gonna also ask for volunteers later. So if you're ready to participate. <laughs> um, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll find you. So the two forms that we have today are a butyl tape, and this is butyl backed. So you don't want to use duct tape on ductwork because it's going to fail. It heats up, it cools down, it falls off. Uh, this, this type is designed specifically for it. Um, it's a two-part two, two kind of tape. You peel off the back side, and um, then the stuff doesn't come off. That's basically what happens. The yeah. Mastic is actually a kind of a quicker for the trades. Um, they have different types. So you'll notice this is a number six Mastic, and this is a thicker Mastic. So we need this because we have big holes today. Um, a lower number, you could, you could basically use a paintbrush to paint on. Um, here we've deliberately made our duck dog very leaky, so you'll see some gaps. Um, and when you come up, just be careful, we'll give you gloves, we're going to give you a suit, so you can go nuts. Um, and again, back to energy, so why do we seal ducts? There's a few reasons. If you're placing ductwork in attic space, you can help avoid ice damming, that's a number one priority. Two, you're delivering the air where it needs to go. So even if you're in condition space, let's say you, you start to see a lot more attics that are being uh, so-called hot roofed um, or conditioned, you still, you know, you don't think, oh, okay, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt my roof, but now you still wanna get your 120 CFM of air to your bedroom. So that's another point of uh, sealing up your ducts. Um, again, the, um, the sealing kind of also helps if you see a lot of duct panning. In homes, you might go into a basement and you'll notice you look up in the basement and there's just kind of a big piece of silver duct board or cardboard even. Um, if you notice it, you're basically going to be pulling all of your air from the basement. So through that fiberglass that's usually sitting next to, you want clean air, you want to seal up your, your duct work. Um, other things to note are just issues of um, condensation, mold, other issues. Once you start sealing up these ducts, you avoid all these contaminants getting into it. Surprisingly enough, a lot of code officials do not enforce this. Um, currently, the code requires eight CFM per square foot to uh, leakage to, that is leakage to outdoors. Total leakage is required at 12 CFM per square foot. And now I'll explain the differences. Total leakage is, again, I mentioned, you might have leakage, it might be into a conditioned area. So it might be leaking into an attic space that the rafters are foamed in. So, okay, it's leakage, but it's staying within the shell. Leakage to outside is, let's say you have a basement or a vented attic, that's gonna leak beyond your home um, and, and to the outdoors. So the testing procedures that we use, when you do leakage to outdoors, you also use a blower door. So now you're pressurizing the home and you're forcing any leakage, maybe at the registers, where, you know, yes, again, it might be leaking to the house, but we force that air to the outside. So either beyond the wall area, into the attic, into your basement space. Um, today, the, the test that we're gonna show you is just basic total leakage. So once we get set up, um, we'll, we have the duct blaster all ready to go. So our components are here. Um, and we'll use this device, which is a manometer. And this is actually what's going to give us our reading. So we've actually pre-tested the dog. And he's in at 83 CFM. So we're going to, you know, pretty soon we're going to pick some of you guys up, um, have you go at it, and see what we can reduce that number to. Um, and believe it or not, so if you're thinking of those numbers, uh, 8 CFM per 100 square feet. In a home that's 1,200 square feet, you're looking at realistically, I can't do the math in my head, but let's just call it, it's close to 120 CFM. So this little piece of ductwork is already at 83. So you can see what it takes to, to reduce that number. Um, codes going forward. So again, this is 2009. For 2012, which may be adopted as early as June of this year, um, and will go into full effect next year, that number is going down to, I think it's, Four, four, yeah, four CFM per uh, 100 square feet, which is a really, really tight number. Um, things that it won't really account for are air handlers. 
and um, air filter boxes. You may, see me, you may see a media box, air bear or whatever it is, and it might be a three inch box. Those can leak, you can seal those up pretty well, but a furnace or a fan coil itself sitting on top of the, or below the ductwork is also very leaky and something you have to consider. Um, so. One last thing too is that with the new code that comes into play, right now you're allowed to do total leakage or leakage to outside. Yeah, so Going thing. forward, um, you're only going to be able to do total leakage, that's and great. that number is going to go to 4% 4, 4 of the floor area from 12% of the floor area. So that's a dramatic drop um, from what we see actually being done at this point in time. So yep. there'll be a lot of work to be done. So all right, so we're going to have the Q&A at the end, but right now we want to pick some volunteers. So we've got, we've got four buckets. We're looking for four people. Can we get anybody else? No one else wants to try this? All right, so the question was, how, why are we not using a paintbrush? So this is a, th like we said earlier, this is a thicker grade. This is like a trial on grade. And when you have really du uh, leaky ductwork like we have here, that's what you're gonna wanna use. Um, typically, the lower the number, the thinner. Uh, typically, f number four is what you see. It's usually gray, too. Um, and they paint it on with a paintbrush. Yeah, we definitely don't worry about what it looks like, because most of the time, too, after the fact, it'll either get covered with insulation anyway. In an unconditioned space, in Massachusetts, you have to have, in attic spaces, you have to have an R8 insulation over your ductwork. Um, in basements, I believe it is uh, an R6. Um, there's places that even um, the HVAC contractors don't think the seal, or they think they are leak-proof. Um, you can kind of see, well, it might be far, but when, after we're done, before we totally get this done up, You'll, you'll notice a, uh, a seam on the leg here. Most of the times, contractors think that is airtight. It is, in fact, not. <laughs> so we need, that to be, we need that to be hit as well. You can also notice on the uh, neck, every one of these seams, they rotate and pivot. Air will, again, sneak through. And how do we know this? Lots of testing, um, and other times if, um, if we're trying to do a training, um, we also incorporate a fog machine. So we didn't bring that today just because of the trade show itself, but you can literally set one up into the fan and uh, blow smoke and it'll, it'll come out everywhere. So do you do that after you're done sealing it? Do you do a, a fog blower test too? Um, typically, no, we usually just get our, our, our leakage number. So um, it's more of a kind of the dramatic effect if, if um, <laughs> we actually kind of do it if, if a contract is just not getting it and they assume it's, oh, yeah. it's there. Once they actually see it, then they, they kind of are like, okay, I guess it does. So um, it always is a huge help. Yeah, I never would have thought of you. you. The question was, can you use the tape and the mastic? And yes, of course. I think just for, for this demo, we're just going to stick with the, uh, the mastic. We'll, we'll typically do, I mean, yeah, we'll typically do both. Um, so a lot of times, for all those standing seams, we kind of just go with the tape because it's, you know, one quick long shot. Um, there's also on this trunk line, there's actually two seams. You can't really see them, but before we'd put the takeoff runs on, yeah. we'd actually just tape the full trunk line and then put our takeoffs off. So there's different kinds as well. The ones that we have right now are um, a crimp style. Yep. So they just, you know, we, we really used it just for the, the leaky factor. Um, they also have a peel and stick type. So, and again, you'd think the peel and stick membrane is solid, but you'd still want to hit it after the fact. Yeah, I was just about to say that, yes. Um, the, the question was the price difference. Um, you'll get, yeah, a, a roll of this tape is typically $28. Um, do you remember how many feet this covers, lineal feet? It's, it's, very, it's not a very big area. This same bucket of mastic, 28 bucks. So you'll go a lot further with the, uh, the, applied, the mastic applied. Right, yeah, so the question was um, retrofit, uh, getting in, into places where they might be between floor joists. Um, they're actually, I think there's a, few, there's a few products out here where they actually seal after the fact with, uh, from the inside. Um, so I think it's a little bit more pricey, but they, they have, exactly, it's a, it's a spray pipe. And I, I believe, I know I've see, I've, I saw them out here today. Yeah, there are different grades. Um, you, you may have just a, the, the question was about the tapes. There, there are definitely a variety. Um, you may have just a foil face tape, which doesn't have that um, backing. I mean, that does work fine. It's thinner, 
So it may nick, it's just a, you know, it's just a, um, the butyl type is just, it's a, it's a thicker type of tape. And it's, um, it actually has a, it has a UL number, which is the number that you need for code. Right. It's UL181BFX. Yep, and we'll have it up here so you can check it out after. But yeah, so that's, that's another, another reason. So it's, it's a UL rated tape. Um, that UL number, please? UL181, yep. And, um, and obviously, again, once you peel it, you'll see that it's got a, a, thicker, a thicker kind of backing to it. So if you do have a little sharp edge, it'll pretty much, you know, it, it won't tear as easily. All right, I think we're... Uh, Uh, I mean, typically you do, yeah. You want to wait for it to set up, but I think that um, we'll still be able to see our, it's going to show a huge improvement just by doing what you did. In the field, it needs to be above 45 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of 12 hours. Actually. What Eric was mentioning was that, obviously, in the, in the trades, when you're kind of out roughing in a home, um, like the last three months, it's been very cold. Uh, you kind of need to have a, a, you want to have a minimum of 45 degrees in the home. Um, so you want to heat. Yeah, you want to heat, heat up the house while, they're, while this is being applied. And uh, for cure time, you want to have it at least that way for about 12 hours. Um, you really only need four hours for it to set. I mean, at that point, you could get your, your reading. But um, obviously, to get it, get it going, you kind of want to not disturb it for that time. All right, so for a duct test, it's pretty simple. Um, again, I'll talk about this device. We have one hose is in the front end. We've got it in his nose right there. <laughs> this is actually going to take our duct pressure. Um, so on the opposite side, we've got another hose going to our fan. That's going to read our fan pressure. This little device also converts that fan pressure to a flow. But because we're doing total leakage, we only need the two hoses. Oh, also, I'll just discuss um, the fan. Let me just hold this up. <laughs> this one's been through a lot of abuse. This is Eric's. So <laughs> um, we've got different rings here. So you can see the different types. Um, you, want to, you want to be on this ring three here. That'll kind of give you an idea of the size. Um, once you start going down in ring size, you see as they get bigger, you can kind of see there's, there's a problem. <laughs> and if you're open, you're probably in bad shape. Unless you've got a, you know, 20,000 square foot home. All right, so I'm going to bring this up. And so we basically, what was your name again? Marie. Marie basically got this thing down to, like he doesn't. sorry, there's one eight. And you'll actually be able to come up and, and watch it, see this for yourself. So, from an right from the beginning of an '83. So that's uh, where'd you miss? Um, it probably could be right. I mean, there could be connection points. There could be, you know, something very the bottom of the feet, the seams at the bottom of the feet. I can kind of see it here. You didn't hit it. <laughs> but again, it's those little tiny seams, and you'd you'd think they're done, but um, yeah. So. Um, I was just hoping you could comment on what this energy savings between the, le the reduction of leakage, um, what it means for energy savings, cost savings for a homeowner. So it's huge. If you think if this was a, a system, a basement system, say you had a two-system house and this was in your basement, we took it from 83 CFM down to 18 CFM. You knocked off 70% of the leakage in this house. Um, by doing that, what you're doing is probably twofold. You're delivering the heat where it should go, um, and you're, you're basically you're not heating an unconditioned space if you had an unconditioned basement. You know, prior to knocking it down to 18 CFM, you were probably heating the basement before the heat was even making it to the first floor area. Um, you know, it, it would be huge in savings numbers. Um, in the return area, too, because that's another big component that we didn't really talk about is, so on a system, you want your return air to come from the areas that you're truly heating, because what that does is that helps the, so basically the efficiency of your furnace, a lot of that comes from how much does that have to work to reheat the air. So if you were sucking 50 degree air from your basement on a leaky system, and you've sealed that system, now that leaky air that's coming back to the furnace is probably more like 62 degrees if you're heating to like 68 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the system has to work less to heat that air back up. Was that at uh, 25 pascals? It is at 25 pascals, yep. When we, when we run the duct blast, we use 25 pascals of pressure. Um, has there ever been evidence of the sealant uh, cracking over time, or what's like the durability of I mean, yeah, it, it, it will, it can, it can crack, but that's why we look for that, um, 
that thicker, you know, like a, a good nickel size kind of thickness to it. Um, where it typically, once you get it that size, I mean, less chances of, of it cracking, so. Follow up. Um, uh, if you're, it's going to be somewhere where you're closing it in, would it enhance it to do a layer of the tape over the stuff? So if it's something you won't be able to access again later easily. Right. I mean, if, if you were, you'd probably tape first and then mastic over that. So okay. Yeah. Yep. It's got to, just so you have a flatter mating surface. The other thing a lot of contractors will do, they'll do inside and outside, belt and suspender approach. So as they're actually installing the ductwork through the open end that they haven't put a connection on, they'll seal the inside, and then typically there's a second guy that follows them up and it's doing the outside. That way it's, it's a two-fold approach. You're better off that way. It's belt and suspenders type approach to the, to the whole thing. Any other questions? I appreciate the volu volunteer. Usually we don't get volunteers. Thank you. Give her a round of applause.